Today is Earth Day, and you heard about that during the middle message this morning. It's a reminder that we all have to, of what we all have to do to honor our seventh principle, which asks us to affirm and promote the web of all existence and our value of independence from which interdependence from which it is drawn. If on no other day, today is the day we do what we can to raise the awareness of others, to protect our environment, our earth, our mother, who has given us so much, given us life, really. Um, how many people here went to the cluster meeting yesterday? Okay. Okay, I don't see anybody back. Okay, nice. Um, and one of the offerings was something called the Mindful Outdoor Experience. How many people did that? Okay, we got one. Okay. Was, was, do you like it? It was good, right? Okay, yeah. This is a little bit taken from the description, and I would have gone on it, except I was presenting at the same time. So thank you to the organizers. <laughs> Um, a mindful outdoor experience is a research-based framework for supporting healing and wellness through full sensory immersion in forests and other natural environments. Another word for it is forest bathing, something that has and offers many health benefits, especially uh, uh, cardi cardiovascular and immune systems. Um, and it also helps to stabilize and improve mood and cognition, right? Another gift from the earth, right? To be in it, what it gives back to us, not just the trees and the flowers and the animals, but what it does to us internally. But we are also gifts from the earth, each and every one of us. And in our fierce advocacy, and hopefully it's fierce for the environment in which we live, we are gifts to the earth as well. We are one of the many gifts that the earth has given to each of us. Yes, we are gifts to each other as well. Unitarian Universalism is a relatively new religion. We're going to talk more about the anniversary of it next month. There are not a whole lot of traditions that make up a part of its practices. But one of them, which we are celebrating today, is the flower communion. Flowers, another gift from the earth. The commission on appraisal, a body uh, in the, within the Unitarian Universalist Association, that's charged with reviewing, studying, and reporting out on different aspects of our faith, produced a report about 20 years ago, uh, which contained a result, the results of a survey distributed to every UU congregation. But you know us, as Nikki Lucier said last week, you use UUing, uh, only about 370 congregations responded out of over a thousand. But 88% of those who answered that survey said that the flower communion or the flower commun com uh, ceremony, as it's also called, was a regular part of their worship. And it is here as well. So what is the flower communion? Many of you have participated in one before, but for those of you who have not, basically it is a ritual in which everyone brings a flower that is placed together with other flowers. 
and that's what we have here in front of the chancel. And then everyone gets to take a flower with them. Okay? What it symbolizes means different things to different people. I like to think of it as a diversity, as a metaphor for the diversity of thought, personality, culture, and belief that we bring when we gather evidence of our value of pluralism, a beautiful joining together of souls, if you will, and how when we depart from one another, we come away with something new, something different something that we did not have when we first came together as individuals. Evidence of the other value that we hold dear, interdependence. And that is as it should be, that we are amplified by the, coming, by the com company of others. We are gifts to each other. When the flower communion was first created, it was meant to symbolize the uniqueness of each individual and the coming together in communion to share this uniqueness. But is there anything else about the flower communion that makes it particularly relevant today? What we know about the flower communion uh, was that it was a ritual first introduced to the world in 1922 in Prague, Czechoslovakia, by someone called Norbert Čapek. He was born into a Roman Catholic family, became a Baptist and a Baptist minister, and he even preached in this country, in New York and in New Jersey for a time. But guess what? His theology caused him to leave the Baptist church, and he and his wife, Maja, joined a Unitarian congregation. They went back to Czechoslovakia and founded the Unitarian church in Prague. And he is credited with breathing life back into the tradition of religious liberalism that had been a part of Czechoslovakia's rich history but he lived during turbulent times. His wife was ordained in 1926 and came back to the United States in 1939 to raise money for relief efforts because of the turmoil that was occurring in Europe at that time. And it was she who introduced the flower communion to this country in 1940 in Massachusetts. Norbert Chopek was one of the many casualties which resulted from the rise of fascism, nationalism, and authoritarianism in Europe, which some say has parallels to what is happening in this country and in the world today. In March of 1941, while his wife, Maja, and one of his daughters were still in the United States engaging in fundraising, he and another daughter, Zora, were arrested by the Gestapo and put in Prankov prison. They were both charged with listening to foreign broadcasts, but he was also charged with high treason. And some of his sermons were used as evidence against him. They were tried, his daughter was sent to a work camp in Germany, and he was sent to Dachau. In October of 1942, he was put to death in the gas chamber at Hartheim Castle in Austria. While in Dachau, one of the things he wrote was, it is worthwhile to live and fight courageously for sacred ideals. This is oh so true, and this lesson is perhaps a gift in the origin of the flower communion story to us. We know what can happen when people fail to make their voices heard and when they fail to take action. 
And we also know what happens when we fail to hear the voices of those who have been crying out for justice. Right now, so many people are living and fighting and dying for sacred ideals. So yes, the flower communion is just the right thing for right now. It honors what each of us brings to community and the beauty and diversity in our congregations. And the death of Norbert Chopek, its creator, and the death of so many others during that time and before and since. If we do not honor our gifts, including the gift of life to its fullest potential, these are all things we should keep in mind. So today for our flower communion, you will be asked to come forward and take a flower. And even if you didn't bring a flower, you can take a flower because we have plenty. Um, I'm going to ask the ushers and greeters to use their discretion in the help of and helping uh, with the flow of people. But it is my suggestion because um, I know you use you, you, uh, <laughs> to come up this aisle on the far left, on my left, when, in, in, in a moment, but we're going to, there's a, we have to do something before that happens, to come up this aisle on the far left, come around, take a flower, and you don't, um, you shouldn't have to pull anything apart, I think we have enough flowers for everybody, take a flower and then walk around this way and either go down this far um, aisle to your seat or the center aisle to your seat. But these two aisles, you're traveling that way, and this aisle, you're traveling this way. But before you come up to take a flower, let us give them our collective blessing. Okay. By reading the words that are on the screen behind me. And I think the choir has them in those little pieces of paper I gave them. Okay. Um, this reading is called The Consecration of the Flowers, and it was written by Norbert Chopek. Okay? Infinite Spirit of Life. And now, please come forward and take a flower. And if you brought a flower today, make sure it's different from the one that you brought.
<laughs> know that your flower embodies all that we hold dear as a community. Not just the love at our center, but in particular, our interdependence and our pluralism. I will close today with an adaptation of words written by Norbert Chopek. In the name of providence, which implants in the seed the future of the tree and in the hearts of men and women, the longing for people living in human love, in the name of the highest, in whom we move and who makes the mother and father, the brother and sister, what they are, in the name of the sages and great religious leaders who sacrificed their lives to hasten the coming of peace and justice. Let us renew our resolution sincerely to be real brothers and sisters, regardless of any kind of bar which estranges one from another. In this holy resolution, may we be strengthened knowing that we are God's family, that one spirit, the spirit of love, unites us, and may we endeavor for a more perfect and more joyful life. Ashe, amen, and blessed be.